Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 11 of my object-oriented design tutorial. Today, I'm going to continue talking about GRASP. And if you haven't seen the past part of the tutorials, I provide a link to them above. Now, like I talked about previously, GRASP principles are going to help you create great object-oriented designs. And in the previous tutorial, I talked about Creator, Expert, Low Coupling, Controller, and High Cohesion. And in this one, I'm going to talk again about polymorphism and get into new subjects like pure fabrication, indirection, and protected variation. Don't worry, it's not as complicated as it sounds. And of course, I'll provide you with a whole bunch of code, examples, as well as some UML diagrams to help you understand this stuff. So this isn't going to be a boring presentation like you're used to seeing. So let's get into it. Now, polymorphism, of course, you've seen countless numbers of times, but in this tutorial, we're going to talk about it in how it is used to dynamically handle numerous similar object types. It is also used to simulate a pluggable software component type system. And what you're going to find when you're programming is you're often going to be performing different operations based off of conditional statements like if and case and so forth and so on. And what this does is it makes your system less flexible because each time a new variation is needed, code has to be changed throughout your system. Now our goal here is when you must work with varying components, you must, as you're going to see here in a second, create a varying polymorphic objects for each. So let's jump in and look at a code example. So here is our old buddy Eclipse, and I'm going to do a little sample here. It's going to be real short, and it's going to be based off of different silver prices that come into you and how you would use them and be able to work with them using polymorphic techniques. So let's just say we come in here here and I'm just gonna go abstract public double get price of silver and I just created this as an abstract class for really no particular reason but it's definitely gonna work in this situation and let's just say that we are going to have a couple different companies that are going to provide us with prices on the price of silver and we have to figure out how to take these different types of information and work with them so there we go there's our abstract class and so let's say one of these companies is called ABC Silver and we're gonna go in here and figure out how exactly we're gonna work with ABC Silver so let's say we go private string and let's say that a silver price that's going to come through with them let's just say it's gonna have SLV at the beginning and it's gonna have the price of silver that they currently have that they're willing to sell it at and then we're gonna go private string name and let's just say they're ABC Silver and I'm gonna give you a much more complex example here I just wanted to ease in. So let's say that this is going to have get price of silver inside of it and there's going to be a string and this guy is going to handle the problems for us inside of here. We're going to be creating this guy to get a different silver price because this silver price is going to come across this way and as you're going to see here it's going to come across differently from the other silver company. So I'm just going to go substring and I'm going to say that I want to get from index 4 onwards and then I want to return turn that going and converting this into a double parse double and we'll just throw our string price inside of there so like I said this is a real simple example and we're just gonna go public string get name and then we'll return the name of the company now we're going to go into xyz silver and it's going to work in a different way and of course this guy here is going to have to extend get silver price can't forget to do that and then we're going to go into xyz silver and it's going to do exactly the same thing it's going to extend get silver price and of course it's going to give me an error message saying i need to come in here and add this unimplemented method okay i did that and of course we're going to override that private string silver price and let's say that in this situation the silver is going to come across 3067 and then it's going to say silver ask price so as you can see, we're getting the price for silver from these two different companies in two different ways. ABC Silver is just going to have this, and XYZ Silver is going to have this. So it's our job to come in here and make them work seamlessly. So how could we do this? Well, we could just go and create a string array, and we could say string price, and then we'll just go silver price, and then maybe split it based off of the space that's inside of this guy, because that seems to work. And and then we'll just go return and we're just going to convert it back into a double and parse double and string price and that'll be the zero index because that's where the split is and then of course public 
string get name, return name, and then jump up here and of course private is equal to XYZ silver. And there we go. So now we're gonna jump into silverprices.java and just make this guy work, which is simple. So let's say we want to throw all of our silver prices inside of an array list, get, and we're just going to use the abstract class, get silverprice.java, hold everything inside of there. And I'm just gonna say silver sellers is equal to new array list. It's over price again, da, da, da. and there we go. And of course, it's giving me an error message saying I need to import this library, and there it is. Okay, so now that we got that all set up, let's just add our different silver sellers to our array list. So we'll just go new ABC silver, just to keep that simple, and then silver sellers add new XYZ silver, like that, and like that. And then we could do an enhanced for loop and get silver price, and then silver price, and take this from silver sellers, and then system out print line. And these are the sort of things you just have to think about whenever you are trying to work dynamically with a bunch of different objects that work differently. And I'm sure you get this one. The one after this one's gonna be a little bit more complicated. And then I'm just gonna go silver price, bounce that in there, and get price of silver. Da, da, da. And we threw two unlike objects inside of an array list. And whenever we run this, it's going to just work with it. As you can see, ABC silver, and it prints out all that information exactly the way we want it. So that is a simple way of using polymorphism and another way in comparison to what I did before. Now we get into pure fabrication. Now, like we saw previously with the expert pattern, while it is often good to have objects that can complete tasks needed for part of a system altogether, all on their own, if this, however, limits reuse, other alternatives should be investigated. And this brings us to pure fabrication. If we create an object to fulfill a need that has no real world counterpart, this is known as a pure fabrication. And an example of this would be an object that that would only save information or update information or delete information in a database. Now using the expert pattern, we previously talked about, well, it might be a good idea to keep all of those things all in one class. However, if it limits code reuse, and also limits high cohesion and contributes to high coupling, that's where we might want to separate these guys. And an example of how this can be done using the gang of four design patterns is the adapter, the command, and the strategy, and a couple other different patterns. So let's look at this as a UML diagram to explain it further. Now you can see here an example where we have a class that is sale, and it's gonna have date, items, item prices, purchase amount, and all kinds of other different things. However, what might look out of place is all of these methods down here that are going to insert information in the database, update it, and delete it, and so forth and so on. You can see here that this sale class is going to be highly coupled to whatever database interface we choose to use whenever we first create this system. This is going to limit, first off, code reuse and it's going to tie it very directly to our current database. Now if we think that we might not want to always be tied to that current database, this is where pure fabrication comes in. We may decide to take those methods completely out, create another class called access database for example, and then through composition then tie the sale into this other class and then insert that information into a database. And like I said before, example of pure fabrication. And it's up to you as a programmer whether you think you should do this. More than likely, it is going to be a better idea to create a separate class for things such as saving the files as well as accessing databases, especially if you plan on doing it in different ways in the future. So pretty simple. So let's jump into something a little bit more complex, which is indirection. Now, indirection is a technique that is used to avoid coupling between objects by separating them with an intermediate object. Now, these adapters, there's a big word right there, which you're gonna see here in a second because I'm gonna use the adapter design pattern to sort of implement indirection. These adapters are going to allow system objects to interact with external interfaces dynamically using polymorphic techniques. So, let me show you a code example. 
So here we are back inside of Eclipse, and let's say we are going to have a video game we create, and it's going to have enemy tanks and enemy robots inside of them. However, enemy robots is not going to directly work with the interface. Let's go in here and I'm gonna show you the interface and then you can see exactly what I'm gonna do here. So let's say I go public void attack, and I define this method inside of here and it must be implemented and it's going to be used with an interface. This is also a way to use interface as if you're not used to using them. Okay, so then we go into enemy tank, which is an outside class, which we have little to any control in regards to how it works. However, we are going to be able to say that it implements enemy attacker. And the great thing in regards to this is enemy tank, whenever we come to here, we're going to be able to add unimplemented classes in this situation. However, you're going to see in a second, enemy robots not going to work that way, and we have to figure out how to work around that. So let's say we have the option to come in here and create a method, which is just going to go system out, print line, and then say something like tank fires to missiles. So using polymorphic techniques, this works. This is just simply going to work, and I'm sure you can see in your head exactly how it's going to work. However, if we save that and we go into enemy robot, let's say enemy robot does not allow us to have that power. Let's say that enemy robot only has one class, and it is called jump on enemy. And that is it. Now that is how the enemy robot's going to attack, but we have no way of going in here directly and being able to change or add an attack method to this and whatever it's called it just says something like robot jumps on the enemy okay so how exactly are we going to go in here and do this well using indirection we are going to implement an adapter and I'm going to call that enemy robot adapter. And what this adapter is going to do is it's going to call the method jump on enemy when an enemy attacker is supposed to call the attack method. And enemy adapter in this situation is going to implement enemy attacker just like before. And it is going to allow me to add that unimplemented method just like that. However, we're going to make a couple changes here, of course, because we don't want this guy to attack. We want the enemy robot to attack. And to do that, we're going to go enemy robot and throw it inside of here. And let's say we call it the robot. So this is the object we want to be able to use. However, enemy robot only has jump on enemy as an option. So we're going to save that inside of it. And then another thing we're going to do is create a constructor for this. And it's just going to be public enemy robot adapter. And it's going to get past the enemy robot. And then of course, we're just going to go the robot is equal to new robot. Okay, pretty simple. Now, whenever this method being attack is called, we just need to call the correct method inside of enemy robot to get this whole thing to work. So inside of attack, we're just going to go the robot and then call jump on the enemy, right like that, or jump on enemy. And if I'll save that, and now if we jump over into test adapter.java, we're going to see how this whole thing or thing is going to work for us. So we just need to go enemy attacker, just like before. We're going to create a tank and just go new enemy tank. And of course, we could throw this into anything, use it in many different ways. Now to implement the enemy robot, the way it can work, well, we're just going to go the robot, just like before, new enemy robot. But then we have to send it through the robot adapter to make it work with our system. New enemy robot adapter, and then send over the robot to it. Now the adapter from this day forward or this moment forward is going to act like the robot itself. So whenever we go the tank and we want it to attack, we just go attack just like that. And whenever we want robot adapter or the enemy robot to attack, we just throw it to the adapter and make it work. And if we execute it, you're going to see that it does work. And there we are. Tank fires two missiles and a robot jumps on the enemy. So there's an example of using indirection to throw an adapter between two different unlike objects and make them work inside of your system. And that brings us to the final part, which is protected variations. Now, often you'll have the question, how do you design objects so that variation doesn't have bad effects for you, especially in the future? Well, what you want to do is you want to look for elements with coupling that may change and surround them with a stable interface. And I'm going to use some UML here to give you an example of that. Okay, so once again, we have a class, which is sale, and we have date, items, item prices, purchase amount, and so forth. However, there's one thing 
down here, which we think very well may change in the future. And that is how we are going to calculate taxes. Now, right now, maybe the taxes are stable and we know what they are, but there's one thing that we are almost certain about, and that is that taxes will change. So, using protected variations, we want to protect from that. Again, in this situation, we're going to use an adapter. So in this situation, what we're going to do is create an interface called Calculate Tax. And inside of here, you're going to see that, let's say that we think beer and wine taxes may be calculated differently in the future. No problem. We just create an interface. And then we slap an adapter in it, just like we did previously with the enemy robot or enemy attacker adapters. And then we just tack on Calculate Tax and have them just simply work for any changes that may occur in the future. Now, this is technically the end of the object-oriented design tutorial. However, I'm going to be getting into code refactoring, which I thought deserved its own tutorial on its own. As soon as I have it done, there will be a link to it above. And if you have any questions about anything you saw in this tutorial, please leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.